Have you tried diet after diet and you're still not losing the weight? Are you ready to try something different and maybe some inner healing to help you on your weight loss journey? So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about how you can go back and heal the inner child to help you accelerate your weight loss. Hi, I'm Vanessa McLennan and I talk about all things weight loss, eating habits, emotional eating, intuitive eating. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and I help you get to the root cause of your eating patterns so that you can step away from that diet cycle and lose weight for good. So keep watching because this really is magical for helping you get to the core of your eating issues so that you really can have new patterns and step away from that diet cycle forever. So what is your inner child? When we're born and we're very, very young, we are these like, amazing, perfect little human beings. <laughs> you know, we're full of wonder, excitement, play, and curiosity. It said between the ages of two and six, our brain waves are the same as the state in hypnosis. So, you know, when we're between the ages of two and six, we're so, you know, absorbent to learn, aren't we? We're so curious and we so pick up on, up on anything and we're so accepting of the world. And so hence, it's no wonder that hypnosis actually has a very positive effect on us. Now, when we're those children, there are some adults and older, you know, children who take advantage of that little child and then, you know, perhaps abuse, manipulate, um, you know, berate or humiliate that child. And hence it causes that child to go inwards, to retreat and to end up having new patterns and to learn to comfort itself. This causes feelings of, you know, anger, shame, guilt, embarrassment, any of these feelings which just are not positive and not, you know, good for us. When we're brought up in that loving, supportive environment, we go through life learning tools that are very constructive for us, constructive to have human relationships, also good communication skills, assertiveness skills. So then when we get to adulthood, we learn very effectively how to deal with life's challenges so that you know they no longer, or they're not, not a bother to us. But when we're brought up in that environment where, you know, it, it is abusive or um, it is just a horrible, you know, denigrating environment and we then don't have the tools to be assertive, we then feel those feelings of, you know, anger, shame, and then that causes us to feel like huge amounts of stress, anxiety, and then that child and also then as an adult, we maybe act out, you know, what we might deem as bad behaviour, but really it's just what we've learned as a child to cope with those situations because no adult has taught us the skills that we need that are constructive and beneficial for us. So why visit our inner child? Well, when we're that youngster, we you know, perhaps had times when we turned to food. So it could be that we weren't in that supportive environment. We were in that really negative, horrible environment and food became our comfort. You know, we have needs when we're children, we still do as adults, where we just require, you know, basic love, support, to be listened to, you know, to be heard. And if we don't get that, we will fulfill our needs elsewhere or somewhere else. And a lot of the time, that can be food. Um, also, perhaps our parents have really strict guidelines around food. Maybe, you know, they withheld food, only gave us certain foods, only gave it at certain times or had just weird rules around it. And hence then we grew up, oh, feeling, you know, that shame, that embarrassment, um, that guilt around, it could be food, but it could be just around ourselves because that's the way that we were made to feel when we were children. So it's never too late to reparent that child and give it the tools and the support to help us into adulthood. Because when we are now as adults, we might find ourselves being triggered by the same patterns. We might find ourselves being triggered by, I don't know, something that you know causes us that same anger, fear, shame, guilt, and that turns us again to go to food. So by going back and then revisiting that child and giving this child the tools that we need, you're bringing this child up to adulthood in that loving and supportive way that that child needed and so hence what you're doing is then giving yourself the tools and the skills to be able to deal with life's challenges without then going to your old patterns. An example, I had a client, let's just call her Sarah for confidentiality, who 
She was triggered. She found that she, um, in times when people were being horrible, she perceived them to be horrible to her. She would then turn to food. So she would eat lots and lots of food out of comfort that she noticed. And um, what she did then afterwards, she would berate herself for eating so much food. So when we went back to the inner child, she was really brought up in this horrible environment, you know, a physically abusive and uh, verbally, you know, mentally abusive, where father was an alcoholic, mother was a narcissist, and she didn't get the love that she needed or be heard or just supported that she needed. So what she found herself doing was turning to food. And then what would happen was her parents would, you know, berate her, tell her off for eating that food. So come to the present day life, somebody was horrible or she perceived horrible because there's, you know, the difference there. And so hence she turned to food and then would then berate herself for that food. So she was then causing those same patterns that were happening in her own childhood. Now, when we go back to our childhood and we then learn that actually, okay, it's not, or we learn to stop blaming other people. We stop blaming our parents. We stop blaming other people for making us feel the way that we do because nobody can make us feel something that isn't within us already. So what we are doing is we are teaching our child and supporting our child, giving the tools that they need so that when they get to adulthood, like now as you are, you have what you need to be able to overcome life's challenges. So as you go back and you heal that inner child, give the child what it needs, you're then able to take yourself through to adulthood and you now have the tools that you need to choose your own patterns of eating. And that is really, really freeing and liberating. So how do you start? Well, just take yourself off to a quiet time, uh, you know, quiet space where you can sit and no disruptions. And then just take the time to actually go within and just start to a conversation with your inner child. Now, you're meeting this child for the first time, so treat it like you would, like, you know, meeting a, any other child for the first time. You might be start going, hello, little, you know, in your name. Hello, little Vanessa, how are you? And really reassure that child, I'm here to help you. I'm here for you. And please feel free to tell me anything that you want to tell me. What would you like to tell me? What would you like me to know? How can I help you? What do you need from me? So really gentle questions. And it could be that actually you just sit and you listen for what comes to you. But it's all done in a loving and compassionate way. And you're just gentle and accepting. And as time goes on, you can keep repeating that so that more and more comes up, just like any relationship, you know, you get to know somebody better, get to know them deeper and more, and then you're able to really help them and serve them better. So if you want to know more about this and more about the inner child, really leave your comments, your questions below so that I can answer them. And also I know what, you know, further videos you might like on this topic. So uh, thank you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the bell to be notified of my next video, which comes out every single Thursday. Thank you very much.